Welcome to the channel and welcome back to another video. On this video, I wanna give you the truth about the Bank of America No Money Down Home Loan Program for Minorities. Let's have a frank, honest, and open discussion about those loans. Could they be helpful? Could they be harmful? Could they be wonderful? Let's have the discussion. Guys, back in late August, early September, the Bank of America announced that they were gonna be rolling out a new program to help hopefully close some of the racial wealth gap that's out there. And this loan program or this loan product was to be called the Community Affordable Loan Solution. Now, some of the highlights of this particular loan program is zero money down, zero closing cost, so no closing cost for the buyer, and no PMI. You know, typically when you put down less than 20%, there's private mortgage insurance. Well, this program does away with all of the PMI, so the person taking out the loan does not have to pay any PMI whatsoever. And it's for first time home buyers in designated markets, in designated places. Another big highlight of this particular loan program, they don't check your credit score in the traditional way. The credit guidelines they came out and said they were gonna use are things like on-time rent. Did you pay your rent on time? Utility bills, are you up to date on your utility bills? Phone bills, auto insurance payments, those types of things were gonna check each person's credit worthiness instead of the traditional credit check. And also a part of this program is the person taking out the loan has to go through a class in order to be eligible for this particular loan from Bank of America. This is for first time home buyers in specific markets or specific areas. They started the pilot program in the cities of Charlotte, Dallas, Detroit, Michigan, Los Angeles, and down in Miami, Florida. Now listen guys, on the surface, Sounds good, sounds wonderful, a lot of good things could possibly come out of it. And again, the way this was advertised initially was to help out black and Latino folks move into home ownership for first time buyers. But after some research, I understand that this is for any minority that wants to be a part of the program. You don't have to be black and you don't have to be Hispanic. But if you're a minority and you wanna get into this program and you wanna buy in a specific city, an area in that city, then Bank of America will extend this loan program to you. Now, although it wasn't widely advertised, I do believe that Bank of America is gonna provide some type of 3% down payment in the form of a grant to each person that wants to take advantage of the loan. Again, on the surface, looks good, looks wonderful. After all, four out of 10 black households in America are homeowners. Five out of 10 Hispanic households in America are homeowners, whereas seven out of 10 white households in America are homeowners. So Bank of America touted this and advertised this as a way to close the home ownership gap. But let's talk about some potential problems with this, some things that could go wrong that make this risky and possibly fall short in maybe its intended goal. Guys, I don't know exactly what Bank of America's ultimate goal here was. I know what they say their goal is because they're gonna say that in the press because it sounds good, it looks good. But what is the ultimate win for Bank of America? After all, Bank of America is a bank. They're not a philanthropic organization. They're not a non-for-profit that's just trying to do good for the citizens of America, right? This is a bank. And as a bank, they're designed to make a profit. So my thing is, how is that profit gonna to come to Bank of America? Don't really know for sure, but let's go over a few things that could be problematic for this type of loan. Now, the first thing is this, guys. Home ownership always involves more than just paying for a mortgage. It's way more involved than just simply getting in the home. You have to be able to keep the home and sustain repairs and maintenance on a home and pay for those things. So these expenses and upkeep of the property, those things are gonna be really, really important. Yeah, you can get in the home, but can you maintain the home? Can you repair the roof if the roof goes bad? Can you clean the carpet, clean the gutters, manage the lawn care? There's a lot of things that are involved. That's just a few. There's plenty more things you have to do. Now, while Bank of America is helping people get in these homes, what is gonna happen with all of those other things and other expenses that you need to maintain a home? Because people that don't have enough money for a down payment, a lot of times they don't have the money to do the repairs and maintenance and upkeep of a property as well. 
while it looks good on the surface, what about the behind the scenes things? What about taking care of those things that need to be paid for once somebody is actually in the home? Now, another thing to think about or issue I kind of have with these particular loans is this, guys. What about the property values in those specific cities and neighborhoods where Bank of America is going to extend this loan program? What about the overall ability for these neighborhoods to bring up and raise their values so that when you buy a home that's no money down, are you getting a home that's appreciating at a good rate for you or are you getting a home in a bad neighborhood it's going to possibly depreciate or barely increase so if the national appreciation average of all homes across all of america is four percent but you're buying a house no money down in an area that's only appreciating at one and a half percent per year what happens is you don't build up very much equity very quick and that's another issue with a no money down loan like this program is trying to do so what i'm saying is you're putting people in these homes, but what about the areas of investment in the neighborhoods? What about the infrastructure of the neighborhoods to bring the neighborhoods up in value? You know, making sure there's grocery stores in the neighborhood, decent grocery stores, making sure the public schools in these neighborhoods are good and other resources in the neighborhood, community centers, whatever it may be. What about that piece to this, right? Do you want people buying in neighborhoods that are decrepit and going down and either losing value or not going up in value? What type of neighborhoods? Now that takes me to another one. Why is it that they're only choosing specific neighborhoods of these cities? Why come I can't go buy a house in Provo, Utah or Billings, Montana or Overland Park, Kansas, right? If Bank of America is helping me as a minority, I should be able to take this program and not only have to go to a certain neighborhood in Dallas or in a certain neighborhood in Los Angeles. I should be able to go anywhere and utilize this home loan program. If you're truly offering me a no down loan and you're doing it for the betterment of me, as you say, Bank of America, then I should be able to use this program anywhere. Another issue I have is that when you do a no money down loan, you're basically borrowing more. Let's say you find a house for $300,000 and you don't put any money down on it. Well, now you got to go out and get a $300,000 loan which means you're borrowing more than the person who may have had, say, a 10% down payment. 10% down payment on $300,000 is $30,000. If I put $30,000 on a $300,000 house, now I only owe two seventy. dollars Whereas the people who didn't put anything down, they owe three hundred. dollars So they're more in debt. Not only are they starting off with no money because they're not putting no money down, but now they have a bigger loan. And so what happens is those people face more debt. They face actually more risk. And the other thing is this, if you don't put anything down on your $300,000 house, then you have zero equity to start. If I put $30,000 down on the same house, I have $30,000 of equity to start. So in 10 years, it puts me at a much better position than the person that put down nothing. The person that doesn't put down anything has to hope that the home value does not slightly decrease. Well, if you put nothing down on a $300,000 house and the home slightly decreases for one year in value and it goes down to $290,000 as its market value, then you've lost $10,000 and you're basically upside down in a house. In other words, no money down is risky for the borrower. And what it does is it puts that borrower in a bigger risk position because there's no equity. If you buy a house for 300K and you don't put anything down, well, guess what? In a year or two, you may be upside down and can't move. You may be locked in right there because you cannot sell the house for more than you actually purchased it for. Whereas if you walk into a home with equity, you can sell the house for more than your loan amount. So that's another thing that is problematic with these types of loans. It takes people who are already in a vulnerable position and it adds risk to them and puts them at a more vulnerable position for at least the first five to 10 years of the loan. Because if we have a bad housing market, things start going down, these folks will be in bigger trouble and you'll see an increase in foreclosures. Hey, you guys know what happened back in 2008, 2009, right? Housing values went down and foreclosures were everywhere. Come 2009, 2010, 2011, foreclosures were all over the place because subprime lenders were extending 
these types of loans to people that had bad credit or people that had no money down. That's exactly what happened in 2008, 2009, 2010. So Bank of America is sort of extending the same type of loan program that some subprime lenders were doing back then. Again, problematic. Whenever a person borrows money and they have less skin in the game, things are really being set up for problems down the road. In my opinion, guys, it's never in the best interest of the person taking out the loan to get a no money down mortgage. You know, one of the biggest things that probably needs to be mentioned, guys, is that it doesn't help your ability to be financially responsible if you're given a no money down home loan. You know, in order to sustain your finances and personal finances for a long term, you got to be financially responsible and zero down loans is setting a person up who may have already had problems in their past with money to possibly have problems in the future with their money. Again, these are high risk loans. Now banks, guys, banks have to make money. Banks are not philanthropical organizations. They're not nonprofits. These are profitable businesses. Banks are, they're profitable business and they're gonna make their money somehow on this loan program or else they would not be offering it. Now, it could be in the form of slightly higher interest rates. You know, if the 30-year mortgage is 6%, these rates might be 6.75, or they might be 7%. And maybe that spread is where Bank of America is gonna make their money. But I guarantee you this, Bank of America is going to make their money on this loan product. Guarantee you. They just don't do this just out of the goodness of their heart. Money is not free. Somebody has to pay. So again, one of my biggest issues is why are they selecting certain cities and certain neighborhoods. Is that just for the pilot program or is that how it's gonna be long term? Could Wells Fargo and some of the other large lending institutions jump on this bandwagon and do something similar? That's possible as well, we just don't know. So with this video guys, I hope I was able just to lay out a few of the issues and problems with these types of loan programs that are no money down and typically put people at more risk. But we'll wait around and see what happens a little bit on this particular loan program. Again, in my opinion, guys, there's lots of reasons to be skeptical. There's lots of reasons to turn a side eye on this and not be real sure about it and be a little leery about it like I am. So listen, do me a favor. Let me know your thoughts about this program. Do you think this is a good program or do you think there's some issues that make this good? or make it bad? Let me know in the comments below. And if you got anything at all out of this quick video, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, share the video and turn on your notifications for more videos like this. Hey, the best person to take care of the old you is the young you. Take care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.